get into the episode, I do just want to apologize because the audio, heads up, is not amazing. My camera's microphone's stand broke, so it was just not really positioned greatly and I didn't realize till I was editing. Uh, it will be fixed next episode. Sorry. Love you. Hello and welcome back to the Gray Space Podcast. I am Gray. This is my space and this is episode 14. And this is fun fact, take three of this episode because the first time the camera angle I thought was right and then it wasn't right. Uh, and then the second time I just was freaking stumbling. I don't know why. Um, well, I maybe smoked a little before this. It's, it's a Friday, okay? And I'm being leisurely right now and productive at the same time but like most of my productiveness is over for the day i just got done showering because i just got done working out for my from my second workout of the day um whoa workout that's crazy i wonder what today's podcast episode um is about today's episode is about how to fall in love with fitness from me a non-professional obviously this is don't take this as like professional workout advice i'm not like a trainer i didn't go to school or like i don't i i'm just figuring this out as i go right and this is for you to figure it out as you go so <laughs> how to fall in love with fitness as someone who started out absolutely hating working out to now working out almost every day multiple times a day um, oh, before we get too deep into it, though, podcast guests are Olivia to my right and Casper is to my left. He is being a little bit of a lazy bones today. Um, oh, not the fur. He's shedding right now, too. So let's go over the episode chapters. Uh, this is going to be it's not like there's not a lot of sections, to be honest. The first one is my fitness journey. Then it is how I went from hating the gym to working out almost every day. And then the rest of it is just answering you guys' questions. Um, and there are like some subsections in there. Like I kind of, I took you guys' comments from Instagram because if you don't know, I post on my Instagram story saying like what, giving you guys a topic for a future podcast episode. Um, and so I let you guys like ask questions about it or if you have anything like specific you want me to talk about or if I don't know if you want to throw something in there I guess I kind of use that to help me build my uh, podcast episodes and my guides so I took a bunch of y'all's questions and I grouped some things together and um, yeah let's just get into it starting with my fitness journey because I if you like follow me on like Instagram or here then you guys probably know that I do Pilates, but I've never like talked about my personal fitness journey. So let's get into it. Um, I started to take it seriously, like probably a little over a year ago, maybe a, a year and a half ago. Um, and I started with running because I always heard about the fucking runner's high, dude. And I was just like, I, 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 I tried running because I was like, I didn't believe in it, but I also wanted to experience it. Um, and it didn't happen. Didn't like it. Running is not my thing. Although I do unfortunately think I might try to add some jogging into my routine, but anyway, <laughs> maybe, maybe not. I don't know. So then I was pushed into going into the gym. Uh, was not a fan of the environment slash uh, feeling of like the gym because it was just a public, it was a Planet Fitness, um, which no shade to Planet Fitness at all. It was just a gym, a public gym environment for people that don't go to the gym or haven't been to the gym yet, but like want to go is intimidating especially Planet Fitnesses. They're so big and there's so many people there. Um, and yeah, I'll talk a little bit more about like that experience, like the gym specifically in the next section. So hold that thought kind of. Um, so yeah, I was being pushed to go to the gym uh, and I just wasn't feeling it. I was just like super anxious. I didn't really like the workouts. I was just like, not, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. Sue me. Okay. 
Then I tried Pilates. I don't really remember how I got into it exactly. It was probably like fucking, I really don't know. It was probably TikTok or Twitter. Probably fucking, I really don't know. <laughs> I might have stumbled across like a Pilates princesses like post or something and been like, oh, you know, Pilates. What's all that about? Truly, I don't remember, but I tried it and I liked it, but I wasn't consistent with it um, because of the old place I went to, which I loved and I love the instructor instructors and everything. Um, but their like membership prices are just Pilates is expensive. We will talk about that. But yeah, I just wasn't like consistent with it because at that point I was still like kind of exercising for another person, which again, I'll talk to in the next, talk about in the next section. Um, so I wasn't like, I don't know. I just wasn't in the, in the headspace to like it, I guess, or I don't know. I was kind of holding myself back from really liking it. Although I did like Pilates. I just, I didn't care enough about it to like really build a routine and be serious about it. I do think that's a better way to say it. Then, oh my gosh, I got into dancing and I loved it. Forgot about that. I had a, I go into, <laughs> this is my cardio. I just need to build this back into my routine, to be honest. Um, I got into just dance. Y'all, life hack. If you want to do cardio, but you don't like running, get just dance. Get just dance. I fucking love just dance. Once you get over like how stupid you feel, bless you. Once you get over how stupid you feel, just Dance is so fun, and that shit is a workout. Um, we will talk more about dance exercise in, further into the podcast, though. But yeah, I got into dancing, and I really freaking liked it. Um, but I still, like, I wasn't doing anything consistent until I started to be consistent, like, more consistent with Pilates uh, to where... I would start to go like two to three times a week rather than like one to two times a week or like two to three every other week, you know? So yeah, I was going like two to three times a week, but I still wasn't taking it super seriously. Like it was, I don't know. I would skip classes and like I wouldn't feel too bad about it. Um, like, I don't know. I just, I wasn't really all that... Like, I liked it, and I wanted to be more consistent with it, but not like... It wasn't like love, love yet. But wait, we will get there, okay? Because eventually I get there. <laughs> the, the next the next freaking uh, plot... Plot? Point. The next point. I almost said plot point, and I knew that wasn't right. The next point literally says, Started to love Pilates and started going as much as I could. Yes, I, that happened, like, it took a while. Like, when I say that I wasn't consistent with Pilates, or, like, really working out at all, I do mean, like, it wasn't like, oh, I missed it today, I'll go tomorrow. It was like, oh, I missed it today, I'm not gonna go for two months. Uh, it was, like, that kind of inconsistent. And then I started to, like, really get into it, uh, and I started to really take advantage of my membership, and then I started to like Pilates so much and like the routine I built around it and the feeling of it. Um, and I, so I switched it up a little bit um, because the old Pilates membership I had at my old Pilates studio, it was expensive. It was like 250 bucks to only go 12 times a month. Um, I'll talk more about this in the Pilates questions section of the questions section of the podcast uh, because Pilates is a privileged like workout, I guess. Like it's fucking expensive and classes, but anyway. Um, so we'll talk about that later. Where was I though? Oh yes, so I decided to make some changes. I started to introduce yoga to my routine. Um, and then kept doing that and I was like, I still, I am at the point now where I like Pilates and I'm going pretty consistently um, and I'm doing yoga now, but I want more Pilates. So I was at that point like doing all of my membership from my old studio and doing the yoga at the same time, I think. 
yes. Yeah, because I've only been at my new studio for like two months, maybe. Um, so yeah, I decided that once my like membership was up at my old studio, I was like, I'm gonna browse some other Pilates studios. And I found one that had a better plan. It is still expensive though, um, but better plan, much better. And it's also Legree Pilates. I found a new form of Pilates. Well, it's not new, it's new to me. Um, called Legree, which is, oops, sorry, I bumped the camera, um, which is like a quicker paced, and it's, it's, I'm trying to explain it. It's just kind of more intense. <laughs> um, and I was like, oh my God, this is hard. I'm obsessed with it. Um, so I, now I go every day. Well, I go five days a week. I go every weekday. And for a little bit, I was doing Pilates and yoga every day. And I'm, st I'm thinking of still keeping up with that, but I just recently also started to implement actually going back to the gym, um, into my routine for some extra weight training because now that I'm like, I don't, I really, I, it just came with time, I guess, like me falling in love with it. Um, but now that I'm like super into it, it's my goals have shifted and now I'm like, I'm not trying to be a muscle mommy, but I definitely do have some goals for myself. So I'm going to the gym more. So I might not be doing yoga every day. Not sure yet. Um, but yeah, so that is my finished journey. And now let's talk about how I went from hating the gym to working out almost every day. Firstly, I had a change in motivation. And what I mean by that is after I sip my drink, Whenever I first started working out, it was because I was dating someone who um, didn't really like me for me and pressured me to go to the gym because it wasn't enough that I was skinny. Uh, I was skinny fat. His words, not mine. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? But that's fucking old news. Um, but yeah, I was just like, I was pushed into it because like he wanted me to look a certain way. And so of course I didn't like it if I wasn't doing it for myself. And I had like that specific reason cause that's a shitty ass reason to work out. Um, fuck that. Don't, if you are like here because you're dating someone that's pushing you to work out, click off and also break up with them. Um, so I, dumped him and then I also I set my I set my own goals which is I wanted to whenever I like got more into Pilates I wanted to I wanted to tone it up and I wanted to grow muscle but I was like convinced that I was gonna be bulky no you're not you're not gonna get fucking bulky if you literally just do Pilates girl that's not gonna happen um and now I still have those goals, but I also am working on some body recomposition. So next, I also found exercise that works for me and exercise that I actually like doing. So I, as I mentioned, I tried a few different things. And even when I found something I liked, which was Pilates, I ended up within that finding something that I loved, which was a specific kind of Pilates, Legree Pilates. Um, so I also, found the best workout option and time for myself. And when I say workout option, I mean the style of Pilates, I mean the membership, I mean like the days, the time in my routine, you know? Um, and also getting addicted to the results helped a lot, motivated me a lot. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's a really, I guess, generalized, not generalized, broad. Yeah. That's like a broad breakdown of how I went from hating the gym to where I'm at now. So let's go over some questions from you guys. So a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of people asked about, um, just like how to get motivated to go and also how to get motivated to stay consistent with it, how to find the motivation to start and to maintain the motivation for me personally. Obviously, this is based on my personal experience. 
Um, honestly, just forcing myself to do it at first, uh, knowing that like it would be good for me and that ultimately after I do it, I would feel better. Like a lot of the time before I was like super consistent and in love with it, I would like not want to go to Pilates, but I always was like, no, you're going to go because you're going to like it afterwards. Like you're going to be glad you went. You're going to feel good. And I was always right. Um, so really like you do, this is going to be an annoying little common string throughout this podcast episode of like, just do it. But like at some point you do have to be the deciding factor for like, if you're going to work out or not, like I can give you all of these tips and motivational words and pushes, but like you have to physically take yourself there. Um, even if it's like not fun at first it's okay if it's not it's also okay to like not necessarily give up um but um finding like something that works for you is another point on here finding exercise that works for me is how i found and maintained the motivation so i know that kind of contradicts like forcing yourself to do it even when you like don't like it or think you won't like it or like you don't want to do it in the moment but on t on top of that and like on the contrary to that I guess if you are doing something and forcing yourself to do it and you just know from like the heart of your heart that you don't want to do it like per like you for real don't want to do it then find what works for you you know um and I guess the question of like how do you find what works for you I would say first, like, identify your own goals, uh, and then you have to do your own research. I do think I, yes, I do talk about where to start, how and where to start in, like, just a second. It's the next section, so we'll talk more about that later. Uh, but yeah, another way I got motivated is working it into my daily routine because I am not normal up in the head. So I... Um, don't function like a normal person. So I have to build really rigid routine for myself. Um, and I like the routine a lot. <laughs> um, and so once I was able to find the best like time overall for my exercise, that started to help a lot. And once it was like worked into my routine, it also made me want to go more because once I'm like in the habit of it, it helps keep me like on track with things, I guess. I don't know if I explained that the best. Um, but yeah, it's motivating when it's like at the time that works for you, you know? Like if you're waking up at 4 a.m. to go to the gym and you fucking hate it, then like stop going at 4 a.m. If you're able to go at another time that works better, go at another time, you know? Um, and also, this is a big thing and this is a big, um, push, right? You have to have some mental strength to build the phys physical strength. The final point here for how I found the motivation and maintained it is wanting it more than it sucked to do it, uh, which is so very true because the more that you do it, the less it sucks. And the less it sucks, the more you want to do it, you know? Like, it's not wrong that exercise gets easier with time. Like, it's well, it's wrong and right. It's not correct in the sense that the exercise itself literally gets easier, but like you get stronger and you get better at it. So it does get easier for you because you're building strength. Me using Casper's foot as a, a pointer. I don't know. <laughs> so next up is how that was like a, a huge question or a common theme was like the motivation one and also like how and where to start. Sorry, one sec. I'm just gonna like crush this coffee because there's only like two sips left. Hold on, hold on. Identify your goals. That was the thing I mentioned earlier that I said I was gonna get back to. I'm back to it. So identify your goals. So why do you wanna exercise? Is it like a weight thing? Is it a strength thing? Is it like just how your body looks thing? Identify that. And then do your own research. You do, you do have to do some research. Mama, let's research. <laughs> um, exercise formats that are best for those goals. So like if you want to lose weight, 
um, obviously, like, cardio and weight training are, I want to say, the exercises that, like, burn the most calories. But you would, you would, like, look up the exercises, the best exercises for that goal, and then you can try the, the ones that show, show up on Google. You can try them out and see which one you like and go from there. Um, also, a really easy and accessible thing for beginners, which this is good, accessibility um, for people because like public gyms are not accessible for everyone. Uh, freaking like workout classes are even less accessible for everyone. So find free and easy to follow workouts online, such as YouTube and TikTok. Um, this is like a good starting point and it can be a good consistent point. Okay, Casper. Um, so there are a lot of like workout YouTubers and you can really just take your pick, you know, you can Google or search like YouTube search, um, whatever you want to target, you know, whether it's at home leg exercise or core exercise or whatever it is. And there are a ton of helpful videos that are really good and beginner friendly. Um, so that is a really good place to start. And then if you want to, and you're able to, you can go from there. Hey, you gotta, you're kind of breathing loud, mouth breather. Um, so, <laughs> oh, this is what I mentioned earlier. I said to not sink yourself into a hole. And what I am referring to is the thing I mentioned earlier, where if you hate something and you know that you hate it, then stop doing it. It is okay to try something else. Once you have gotten started, over time you can increase your consistency and your intensity if that is in your goals. Um, and also a big thing is to try and fight negative self-talk. And to be fair, this is something I'm still kind of working on, but I have gotten a lot better at it for sure. Um, because it sucks ass when like something is too hard to do whenever you're working out or whenever you're new at something. And so you're around people that are doing it better than you. Like it can be really discouraging to work out in public and to work out in general when you don't really know what you're doing and you don't know where to start. Um, but it's really important to fight like beating yourself up more than you should, you know? Um, and also like assuming that people are judging you as well. That is a big thing too. Uh, not even like, not even just that you need to not discourage yourself, but I used to have the tendency and I still occasionally do of like, everyone thinks I look stupid. Everyone's judging me cause I'm doing this. Cause I probably look stupid doing this. Um, people don't fucking care. People really don't care at the, at the gym in a workout class or oh, don't care. They're not judging you. I know it's hard to like believe that, but once the longer you go, the less judged you feel and the more you realize that like you were never being judged because especially like the longer you go and you get better, you see people that aren't, that are beginners or they're not like um, at the same pace that you're at. And you take note of that because like you have eyeballs, but it's not something you judge really at all, unless you're like a bad person. I don't know, but it's really like, I think that workout spaces and like people that work out, I think that all of that should be really judgment free because literally we are all in this together. So like, why are you being a dick? Ooh, this was another big question. Um, is a lot of people were talking about like anxiety about working out in public spaces. Kind of a good segue. How to fight anxiety at the gym in slash in public workout spaces. Um, firstly is to find a setting you're comfortable in because you can find an exercise you like and still not like where you're doing it. You know, like you can be someone that lifts and still not like Planet Fitness. Find the space that you're comfortable in. And like, I know that that's kind of a, an up to you thing, but like, yeah, I don't know. I can't give you that answer. You got to find where you're comfortable, you know? Uh, it also is good to, again, research your preferred exercise method. Uh, that particularly is good for like, if you're just going into a public gym rather than like a guided exercise class, because for people that just like have literally no idea where to start, 
walking into a gym where there's literally all this crazy ass different equipment can be so intimidating and you don't want to look stupid or do it wrong you know um so if you want literally you can like plan like okay i'm gonna hit legs today and you can fucking google the names of the machines and like how to use them and everything um they also do especially like in public gyms uh the machines usually have a sticker or like something on it that shows how to use the thing if you're okay with like being seen reading that but like nobody is really staring at you nobody's looking at you if they are it's like a completely non-judgmental zoned out like observation you know next is exposure therapy i went through it and you're gonna have to get through it because i'm sorry again i can only help you so much you do at some point have to get over it and I know that that's mean, but I did it. I had to get over it. And I'm glad I did. Um, because it's really, like, not that serious. <laughs> like, people really just don't care. Like, everyone's just working out. It's not that serious. And it's not that scary. Um, in, you know, obviously, in a general circumstance, right? In a non... A non-crazy circumstance. <laughs> Nobody's, like judging you or in an, an uncomfortable environment or whatever um again avoiding the negative self-talk because you can absolutely and you probably whenever you have anxiety about going to the gym sorry to victim blame but it's absolutely you just giving yourself the anxiety you know rather than it i know that that sounds like bad and kind of weird um Guys, I'm not being ableist. I am diagnosed with anxiety. I'm one of you. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to figure out, like, how to say this. Um, like, whenever you get anxious about going to the gym, it's because you're talking yourself down. It's because you're adding that anxiety. So stop it. Get some help. Uh, don't say you can't do it. Don't say that people are judging you. Don't be like, oh my god, that guy at the treadmill is staring at me and I am and I look horrible you gotta stop talking bad to yourself I'm sorry I'm sorry but you just do I struggle with it um I used to be really 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 bad about it now I'm still I'm only kind of bad at it bad about it so <laughs> um ooh, this is a good one if possible you can use the buddy system so if you are anxious what if you're <laughs> if you're anxious about working out um and you have a trusted friend or a partner or whatever be like hey you want to work out with me or you don't even have to work out with me do you want to just like come with me to the gym so i don't look like stupid by myself and then the final point that i put in this section is again remember just that like the people around you that are that you are intimidated by, they started as you at one point. And nobody is really judging you. And it's all, you have to start somewhere. Everyone started at the same place. And it's all a journey. And it doesn't have to be a linear one. But yeah, it's a safe place. You're not being judged. Okie dokie. Next up, no gym. Now what? Because a lot of people don't have access to a gym or can afford like a workout class or a gym membership. So as I mentioned, YouTube and TikTok, um, not just finding like specific like workouts for the day. Like it's not that it's at all a bad thing to look up just like a 20 minute ab workout and that be your exercise for the day. Because like even starting exercise, you don't have to immediately start with an hour long full body routine, right? We all start wherever we start. There's not really a right or wrong place, I guess. So while it is good to have like those workouts, it's also good to find specific creators. Um, I have a TikToker that I like. Her in her handle is um, underscore F E F A FIFA underscore underscore. Um, I like her exercises or like her account because she goes over the exercises in a pretty educational way without like being um, judgy or like mm, 
oh, what's the word? What's the word? Oh my God, no, I'm totally blanking. Hello? Um, like snobby, you know? Because a lot of people, for some reason, in like the gym culture, especially like gym content creators, for some reason are like dicks and exclusionary. Um, but she is just like, she gives you the information straight. She's not rude about it. And she's very helpful. Like she talks about the exercise, like what it targets, the do's and don'ts. And I would recommend finding creators like that, where they give you a full breakdown. But that's just for me personally, because I can't like, I, I need all of the info to do something, I guess. Like I can't just look at someone doing it and then do it um i'm not sure if anyone can actually like i know that physically like literally yes you are able to but i mean like even though you can watch someone do a squat and then do a squat um you should still like learn how to do a squat before just doing it just for the sake of like doing the correct posture so you don't hurt yourself and so you target the correct muscles which is why i like creators like fifa FIFA. FIFA? I want to say it's FIFA. Um, so, offline though, there are totally other forms of exercise that like aren't marketed as exercise but absolutely are. So, roller skating, just dance, swimming, um, general physical effort. So, like walking around the mall, doing yard work, or like doing a deep clean of your house. Um, and you also can do like low impact resistance training in your house. Um, I mean, you can do, if you can fit anything in your house, then really you can do any exercise in your house. But like, there's definitely stuff, like there are exercises that you can do from your home. Absolutely. Alrighty. The next little bit of questions, the next group of questions, we are going to move through these a little bit faster. Um, this section all pertains to diet and like food and nutrition keep in mind i am not an expert on literally anything i don't have a, gr a degree i dropped out of college i have a high school education right um so i'm not a fucking nutritionist or a dietitian don't take me as medical professional advice okay um so someone asked what kind of healthy meals do you make on a budget um i kind of answered this not with like meals but i eventually did hold on so um bulk foods and canned goods are like a really good way to save money on um healthier foods i guess um i'm a vegan and i have a gluten intolerance so i eat a lot of beans a lot of legumes a lot of like chickpeas a uh, lot of things that come in cans utilize cans um some meals that we go our like go to are we have like we do a bowl of like rice, chickpeas, and edamame. And we'll like season that up. Um, we'll do like different forms of tofu and fake chicken and different sauces. We do love a good like curry. We love a Thai or Indian sauce. Um, we also do a vegan chili, which has tomatoes, beans, mushrooms, impossible ground beef, um, and the tomatoes and beans you can get in cans. Those are some good ones. Um, next question. Is dieting more or less important than regular exercise? Regular exercise is definitely more important because if you're dieting without exercising, then you're just dieting. And it's not that like, I don't know, maybe I don't want to say that dieting isn't bad, but like definitely there are a lot of bad diets and a lot of negative, um, I don't know how to word it. <laughs> Dieting can be a slippery slope for certain people. So it's definitely more important to like get regular exercise rather than just like limiting your food out of nowhere. Um, do I focus on nutrition? Yes, I do. I prioritize protein, especially as a vegan. Um, I keep, I don't like track everything I eat really. Um, I most of the time just like kind of keep a mental note just so I know like where I'm at protein wise. Um, yeah, a little. I focus much more on maintaining my, like, gym routine rather than my nutrition routine. Like, I don't really have a nutrition routine. It's just something that I do, like, keep in mind. Next question. Are you a protein shake girly? And if so, do you have any recs? Um, I used to drink Premier, oh, Premier, oh my gosh, Premier Protein drinks. 
um, and the Fairlife Core Power ones. I've had those and those are good. Um, but since I'm now vegan, a lot of those like pre-made purchasable like protein milk and shit um, is I can't have that. So I mostly just like make my own protein shakes. I use um, the Orgain organic powder and I use the one that has the 50 superfoods. There's like two different ones. Well, they're the of the vanilla. I use the vanilla flavor um, because that's just like my go-to. It, it, I can, it's so uh, uh, versatile, you know, because I could have like a coffee shake or a fruit one or a, literally anything. So yeah, um, that's for what I do when I make it at home. I'll do the protein powder, the organ protein powder, and then whatever flavor of my smoothie with oat milk. Um, I do like like a, a fruit smoothie when I'm out, like um, at the Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Um, I'll try to get one of those with like vanilla protein powder or just like adding protein powder in it. But I do prefer to just like make my own because I think that a lot of those fucking healthy, quote unquote healthy smoothie places are like kind of scams and like definitely too expensive for blended up fruit. Um, so make it yourself. Next and final question of the diet section is how is diet shaped into your fitness? As I previously mentioned, I mostly focus on getting protein where I can, especially um, as I am now trying to, not trying to, as I'm currently incorporating more weight lifting and like weight training into my routine. Um, so I definitely want to keep track of how much protein I'm getting. Um, and oh, also a good there's like a there's like a way to know how much protein you're getting or how much you should be getting. You have to do like a multiplication like of your body weight. Look it up. Look it up. There are ways for you to be able to have a general idea of what nutrients you should be getting without needing to like consistently or like really closely track your calories because that can be a slippery slope for people. Uh, alrighty, final bit of questions is the Pilates and yoga questions section. Starting off, is Pilates or yoga more beginner friendly? I would say that yoga is more beginner friendly than Pilates and it is more accessible than Pilates, but they are both beginner friendly for sure. Legree is a little bit more intense, but it's still like, I think it's beginner friendly and accessible to everyone. What is Pilates and how did you get started? So Pilates is a form of strength uh, training that is focused on improving muscle tone, stability, and endurance. Uh, and it focuses on your mind-body connection, which is really good for someone that like you need to understand what's going on in your body to like really get into the exercise. Like that's how I am a little bit. Um, how did you start Pilates? looking up videos on YouTube because there are definitely Pilates moves that you don't need a reformer or mega former to do. I started with Pilates videos on YouTube. Is Pilates suitable for everyone? I would say yes, especially traditional Pilates because it's less intense than like Legree. Um, I've seen a bunch of different people. I've seen like women, I've seen older men, I've seen pregnant people. Um, yeah, I would say that it is pretty like doable for anyone that's able to do it. You know, <laughs> did I say that right? <laughs> and so final question, Pilates versus yoga. Um, I don't think that it's a versus type thing because I think that they work pretty well together. Um, and they are kind of similar in my opinion. I, prefer Pilates because I prefer a more intense exercise, but I love the balance that yoga provides in my routine um, and the way that it makes me feel. And also it's so good for your fucking like stretchy. I am so much more flexible now. Thank you to yoga um, and Pilates. I would say that yoga is better for like flexibility, stretch and flow. And Pilates is more about like endurance and like toning up. So yeah, that was my, um, not Ricky, in my, uh, my unprofessional, that's the word, my unprofessional advice on how to fall in love with fitness and answering some of you guys' questions about it. 
And that was this podcast episode because I have to go. So thank you if you listen to this on Spotify. Thank you so much. Go ahead and uh, answer the question that is like somewhere on your phone or wherever you're listening. Um, and if you are watching this on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and give this video a like and a comment, maybe a share if you want. Um, and subscribe, stick around, stay tuned for either my next episode or my next video or vlog. Thank you and goodbye.